All right, guys, this is a little bit different kind of video. I'm going to tell you about the vacation that I just went on and how it ended. You won't believe how it ended, although I think I'm putting it in the title, so you may have some clue. Stay tuned to hear all about it. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage. That's where I post deals and discount codes and sales and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. So like I said in this video I'm going to tell you about the vacation that we just went on. I always when I go on vacation plan to vlog the vacation for you. I take my vlogging equipment with me but once it's time for the vacation I don't feel like vlogging because I feel like being on vacation and vlogging is work. So I did not end up vlogging it but I did take a lot of photographs so I'll tell you about it and put a few photographs up here when appropriate. So we left on Tuesday and we came back yesterday, Sunday. We were up between San Marcos and Austin in Texas. So Southern Texas hill country area for the most part. And we did quite a bit of different things and went to quite a few different places. So I thought you might be interested in some of these in particular, especially what we did on our very first day. On our way up, we stopped in San Marcos and we went to the San Marcos outlets. You may remember if you watched my channel last June, that we also went to the San Marcos outlets then. And that is where they have outlets for Gucci and Prada and Ferragamo and YSL, in addition to all the outlets that you're used to seeing like Coach. Now I will tell you right up front, because this affected the trip, that the temperatures were up in the mid to upper 90s. It was not comfortable. That's one of the reasons I didn't vlog. I didn't want to be outside. We didn't end up being outside very much, especially in the first half of the trip, just because of that heat. It was relentless and I mean you couldn't be outside for 30 seconds without being drenched in sweat. So it wouldn't have been very attractive to vlog myself during this time anyway. I had a short list of stores that I wanted to go to at the San Marcos outlets more than last year though because last year our trip was quicker. I did stop at Gucci. That was my first stop. It's been my first stop both times I've been there. Last time I was at Gucci, I found some earrings to buy, but this time I found nothing. They did still have a line out the door where they were only letting a certain number of people in the store because of COVID. The workers there were wearing masks, but for the most part, the people in line were not. I pretty much did not wear a mask for the entire trip, and the outlets were one of the only places where I saw a few people wearing masks. We have been fully vaccinated for months now, according to the science that I've heard, we don't need masks anymore, but we're still keeping an eye on the COVID variants. It took probably 20 or 30 minutes to wait in the line. They just didn't have much in the store this time, at least things that I was interested in. I was looking for boutique pieces, not outlet pieces. It seemed like most of what they had were outlet pieces and there was just nothing at all that caught my eye this time. So I left with nothing. Next, I went down to Prada. Prada was still requiring masks. That was the only place on the entire trip that was, but they said they probably wouldn't be requiring them for long. And apparently at the outlet, the mask order had just very recently been lifted, I think within the, the past week. Paul was with me, but we had split up for this portion of the outlets. He went to look for sunglasses. He did end up getting some Ray-Bans. He was very proud of that. But because we were apart from, during this part of the trip and I knew he's not as big a shopper as I am and I didn't want him waiting for me too long, especially with the heat, although there were places like Starbucks he could go in and sit. I did try to make it quick. I tried not to spend too much time looking around at any one store. So Prada, I just sort of glanced around. I'm not very interested in Prada anyway. Didn't see anything that caught my eye, so I left there. Next, I went to Saint Laurent. That is the one place where I was expecting that I was going to buy something. I was looking for a little compact wallet, something that folded up, and they just, all the compact wallets they had were too big 
for what I was looking for. They did have uh, a few cute bags. They didn't have any Lulu bags. They didn't have any of the more popular bags that I saw there last year, but they did have several cute heart bags. And they had this bag that I thought was really interesting. It looks like a round, or not a round, but it looks like a heart-shaped coin purse or something, right? But it was, it was fairly large, but that's not what it was. It zipped all the way open, and then the two hearts folded out like this, and they formed a base with the leather. And then inside of that was this nylon like grocery bag. You could carry that and have the heart as a base. It was really pretty awkward, but it was marked down, I want to say it was right around $100. So very inexpensive for YSL, not something I was interested in, so I didn't get it, and I left there empty-handed too. I also went over to Coach. I wasn't interested in any of the outlet pieces. I was looking for boutique pieces. The only ones I saw were a few beat bags. I already have a beat bag. My Basquiat beat bag. Don't want another one. So I left there empty-handed. So far, I've purchased nothing. Then this place, by the way, this outlet center is huge and it's so hot we didn't want to walk from one side to the other because those high-end shops are at one end. There's a lot of stuff on the other end quite a ways down. So we got back in the car and drove to another part of the outlets where I wanted to look at a few things. We went into the Brahmin store. I have one Brahmin handbag that I love. I love Brahmin bags. They're beautiful and they had a lot of really beautiful bags in the store and some great deals, but I still left with nothing. Then we went to Swarovski. There was nothing there that interested me, so we left with nothing. Oh, but then, then my friends, we went to the Lindt Chocolatiers outlet, and let me tell you, it was a chocolate lover's paradise, and Paul is a chocoholic, so each of us pretty much got one of everything in the store. That only cost about $20 a person. Wasn't that expensive. And we're still working our way through those chocolates. They are quite yummy. From there, we drove up to Austin, which is our first destination for a few days. We stayed at the Driscoll Hotel, the historic Driscoll in downtown Austin. Absolutely beautiful. Every time we go to Austin, we go to the Driscoll, we go to their bar, and we sit for a few hours and have drinks. It's Oh, their bar is absolutely incredibly gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful places that I've visited. The hotel lobby is spectacular. It's it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to stay. But we had never stayed there before and I'd always wanted to. So finally we did on this trip and we got one of the small rooms, but this is the room. It was pretty, it had wallpaper on one end. It had giant crown molding, beautiful. I love crown molding. The bathroom was lovely, really, really pretty. And this was a Tuesday and unfortunately their bar is not open on Tuesdays. So we couldn't go to the barn that night, but we went across the street to another hotel called the Stephen F. Austin and they had a restaurant called the Roaring Fork and we did happy hour there. They had, I think everything on their happy hour menu was $7 and we thought, you know, it'd be little small plates of things. Oh no, it was like full on dinner entrees and appetizers and fantastic drinks. I'm sure we'll go back and eat there next time we're in Austin. The food was superb. The drinks were also, it was a wonderful discovery. We were very happy with that. Then the next day on Wednesday, we did not really go into the Austin part of the trip with a plan. We figured we would wing it. You know, Austin's a city like any other. There are plenty of things to do. The only problem was the heat. So we didn't want to be outside. The bar was going to be open for the rest of our stay there, but it didn't open till four. So we wanted something to do during the day. So we took a leisurely morning of it. We went down to their cafe and had breakfast. Breakfast. We've been to their cafe before for breakfast and brunch, and the food is usually fantastic. I have to tell you, we ate at their cafe, and then we ate at the bar at another point in the trip I'll tell you about. The food was not great. It wasn't horrible, but it was not up to par with where it usually is. The Driscoll has a very nice high-end restaurant, but it has been closed because of COVID, so we weren't able to go there. But we've eaten there before, and the food was excellent, and it just was not up to the standard standards that it usually is. For example, I got this, it's like an Eggs Benedict, but it was this Paris, Texas version where they did it on a croissant with brie cheese. And look at the eggs. They're practically hard boiled. They're supposed to, if you're not familiar with Eggs Benedict, you're supposed to be able to cut into the egg and the yolk is liquid and it just, you know, covers your food and you eat it like that. And that was not this. I was disappointed. Another thing that was interesting about this trip that we noticed is 
It didn't seem to matter where we went. Just about everyone we talked to who was an employee was a new employee, like within a few days or a week or two weeks. And of course, that's gotta be because of COVID. So many people haven't been working, especially in tourism and hospitality and restaurants. So it stands to reason that there are a lot of new employees right now. That was interesting, not something we expected. And it was never a problem, but I bring it up because it could help explain the food issue and why it wasn't cooked properly, and perhaps why some of the food, quality of the food wasn't up to par. We went up to the room, got on the computers, we were looking for something to do. We were looking at some YouTube videos about things to do in Austin, and just so much of it is outdoors and it was too hot. Finally, we came across something that we never do because we try not to do really super touristy things, but we did this time. We took a bus tour of Austin. Oh, and we did have to wear masks on the tour bus. This was a downtown Austin, and hill country. If you're not familiar with that area, I guess most of you are not. The Austin part of Texas, it's sort of lower central Texas. It's very hilly and beautiful in that area. We call it the hill country. There are lots of wineries in that area, lots of outdoorsy activities. And we thought, you know, we're familiar with Austin, but we're not super familiar with it. So why not take a tour? We get to get out of the hotel. We get to see some of the city, but we're still in an air conditioned bus and we're not having to drive. So we did that. It was with AO Tours. I will link them below. By the way, I'll link anything that I mentioned that I can link, I will link below. It was a great tour. We went around a few things in downtown. We went out to the hill country. We got to see the Austin skyline from a distance through the hills. Got this pretty picture of that. We also drove by the Texas State Capitol. We've been there several times before so we didn't go in on this trip and we drove through the University of Texas campus which is in downtown Austin. We wanted to go to the Lyndon B. Johnson Presidential Library. We've been there before too but it was still closed due to COVID. And then we went back to the Driscoll to the bar at four o'clock when they opened and we sat there until about eight or nine o'clock and had a few drinks. The food was disappointing. We started with a hummus plate that was fantastic. Hummus and pita bread. It was amazing. Highly recommend. But then I think he got a smoked brisket burger thing and I got a fried chicken sandwich. Neither of them were particularly good. <sighs> Very disappointing. Next day, Thursday morning, we didn't want to go back to breakfast at their cafe because we we're disappointed with the food. Not for a full meal anyway, but they did have some pastries. So we got croissants and had those in the room. And we pretty much stayed in the room all day. We couldn't think of anything else to do. Again, didn't want to get out in the heat. And Paul's brother and sister-in-law live in the Austin area. So that night we went to their house, hung out there for a bit, had some wine, and then we went out to dinner to this fabulous Mexican restaurant called Echo in Mexico, which is made in Mexico. Fantastic, amazing, incredible food. We've been there before, highly recommend. They're down south of Austin. I'll see if I can link their website. Then when we got back to the Driscoll, we decided to walk along 6th Street, which is right next to the Driscoll, and that's where they have a lot of bars and music venues. It's similar to Bourbon Street in New Orleans, that kind of atmosphere and vibe about the place. I had never done that before, so I just wanted to walk. We didn't go in any of the bars. We were tired at that point, but I did want to walk it and just, just see what it was about. And it was very interesting because there were some people there, but it was really pretty empty. And I assume that's just still because of COVID. Maybe Thursday night too is slower, but it was pretty empty. There was also a police presence and I think the reason for that is because the Saturday before, so this is Thursday, just that Saturday before there had been a mass shooting, which we didn't find out about until we got there. I think something like 13 people were shot. One person was killed. Another person was paralyzed. I don't know the details of what happened beyond that, but yeah, not good. Also, we noticed most of the bars were pretty much empty. They had their music thumping, there were a few live bands, and most of it was music we weren't interested in. But a lot of the places that had like a doorman, bouncer guy, they kept trying to get the two of us to come into their bar, which tells me they're pretty desperate if they're trying to get me and Paul to come into their bar that's usually filled with 20 somethings. So we just walked about three blocks down and came back to the hotel and grabbed our final drinks from the Driscoll bar, took those to the room and spent our last evening there. Friday morning, we got up, got ready, packed. We didn't even have breakfast there. And we started heading to our second destination, which was Wimberley, Texas. It's a small town out in the hill 
country, kind of between Austin and San Antonio. But we did make several stops before we got to Wimberley. So I'm gonna tell you about those. One was a place, a restaurant, like a food truck restaurant kind of place. Austin, by the way, is known for their food trucks. And this was in South Austin. It's called Valentino's, and we heard about them from one of the YouTube videos that we watched about Austin. And I'm gonna show you a picture of the breakfast that I got, but I'll do that in a second after I tell you about the process of getting the food, because that was interesting too. The food was excellent, so if you're in the area, you will want to know this before you go there. Their website said that they were only taking online orders, so I kind of expected when we got there that we'd have to scan the menu and order online, and we did and they were doing that to minimize human contact. So we scanned the thing. Most of the places we went, we still had to scan the little QR code and bring up a menu on our phones. No different here, we ordered our food, and then we got a message after we ordered that said your food will be ready in approximately one hour. If I'd known that, we would have ordered before we left the hotel, so that was annoying. They had covered places to sit, so we went and sat, and the way it was working was when your food was ready, you didn't get an alert on your phone. There was this guy that brought out paper bags with a receipt attached that had your order number and your name and he would yell your name the seating was so far from where he was putting the food you couldn't hear him so every time you saw him come out you had to walk up and check to see if that was your food or not also kind of annoying anyway about 30 minutes passed and our food does show up so it did not take a whole hour this is a picture of what I got it doesn't look like all that much but this was one of the items that was featured in the video we watched and it seemed like the most interesting item on the menu for me, so I ordered it. It's a breakfast taco, and this is Tex-Mex barbecue food, which is something I've never had before. It's an interesting concept. Fusion on the food truck. It had refried beans on the bottom. It had breakfast potatoes, and it had a fried egg, and then this beautiful, amazing, delicious, juicy, fantastic piece of brisket. Oh, it was so good. The tortilla that it's wrapped in is cooked in the brisket fat, so it has that extra flavor in it. Mwah. It was amazing. That was some of the, we had some really good food on this trip. That was one of the best things we ate. Delicious. From there, we headed down to our favorite winery in this part of Texas, which is Driftwood Estates Winery. We did a wine tasting. It was six wines for $20, I believe, per person. And of course you can share tastings, so we really each tasted 12, you know, you taste each other's glasses. And we always go here when we're in the area. Their wines are fantastic, but besides that, what makes this the best winery, and besides them having a bistro with excellent food, what makes this the best winery in this part of Texas is the view. They are up on this hilltop and there's this open view where you can look down onto their vineyards and it is just spectacular. You can spend all day there just sitting and looking at this incredible view. It's so beautiful. So we went there, we tasted the wines, and then we decided to join the wine club. So we're now members at Driftwood Estates Winery. So we got our tastings for free. We were already going to buy six bottles of wine, so we got 20% off each of those bottles. And then we have a commitment of four shipments over the next year, so every three months, of three bottles each which is very doable. So we're looking forward to those. And then you also get 10% off in the gift shop and you can bring, each person can bring a guest and they get a free tasting as well. So it was a really good value we thought and we signed up and now we're members. I highly recommend them, not just because we're members. It's really fabulous there. And right now you can just walk in there. With some of the other wineries in the area, you have to make an appointment for a tasting, such as the next place we went, Wimberley Valley Winery. When we were in town last year, we could not go into Wimberley Valley because we did not have an appointment because we did not know that you had to make appointments. It was a new thing from COVID. So this year I knew to check the websites beforehand and make appointments when necessary. So Wimberley, it was was five or six tastings for I want to say $18 per person and again you can share each other's tastings. In my opinion their wine is not as good. Oh I just remembered I was going to show you the wine we bought at Driftwood Estates. The one I just talked about where we became members. We got two bottles of the Sangiovese, one bottle of the Armadillo Red, two bottles of the Albareño, and one bottle of the Dry Orange Muscat. They also have a sweet orange muscat. Two of my favorite wines at Driftwood are the Sweet orange muscat and they have what's it called starry nights it's a sweet sparkling wine but they were sold out of both of those unfortunately so at Wimberley we bought two bottles is that right 
two bottles. No, I bought four bottles. I got this Prosecco, the Benvolio Prosecco, and I got this bottle of Sangria. I got this from my mom. Paul got this that doesn't say what it is on the label. It's just a picture. It says it's a red wine blend, whatever that means. And he got this Moscato called Innocent Bystander. They refer to this colloquially as their watermelon wine. I didn't taste watermelon so much, but it was a nice sparkly, it's a sparkling rosé Moscato. Very nice for summertime. And when you drive up there, I don't have a picture of this, but straight ahead there's this really big grassy area with Adirondack chairs. So we thought we would go sit out there with a glass of wine, kill some time before we went to our next stop. But we saw people walking around by this tree and we were told there was a food truck. So we walked over there and it turned out to be this other beautiful area we didn't even know was there because there's a building in front of it and you can't see around the building. And it's this deck with all these tables and chairs. It's a big deck with different levels. And then beyond that, there's a big grassy area and fields and there's, there's a garden and there was a food truck with burgers and pizzas and things. And then in the lot next door, there were longhorn cows. So I went and took their picture. There was also a wine truck that was selling wine from the vineyard and glasses. So we sat out and had a couple glasses of wine. Paul went and took pictures with his new camera bag, of course, his Billingham. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I'll link it below where he unboxes the bag for you. And it was getting late. We were getting a little hungry, but we didn't want to have a full dinner like from the dinner truck because we wanted to have a dinner in Wimberley. So he got, what did he get? He got a little pasta salad a side from the food truck and I got a side that was a watermelon salad with feta and spring salad and some sort of very light vinaigrette sauce. It was delicious. And then we drove down into Wimberley, actually a little past Wimberley into the hills just south of that to the bed and breakfast where we were staying called the Blair House Inn. They have a main house with a few rooms and we stayed in one of those rooms but then they also along different points of the hills have these cabins you can rent. Very nice little place, the owners were nice. They had three Rottweilers, which I was very happy about because, you know, dogs. And we were in the Galveston room, which is the smallest room they offered. It was the only room available when I tried to book. There were cabins, but they were quite a bit more expensive than just a room. So here was the room. It was kind of small, little queen bed. Here's the view out the window. And then the bathroom was tiny. It was like a New York City apartment kind of tiny bathroom, but it was plenty big enough for our needs. For dinner, we drove into town and went to a place called Inos. It's I-N-O apostrophe Z. They have different decks that you can eat at, or you can eat on the ground outside at picnic tables, and we did that. There's this river that runs through, there are several rivers that run through Wimberley, but this restaurant was right on this one river. It was so pretty. So we sat out there and ate. The food was excellent too. I wasn't expecting much from them, but the food was much, much better than I thought it would be. And then we we went back to the B&B &B and enjoyed the pool for the evening and woke up the next morning on Saturday for our final full day of vacation. And we did quite a bit this day as well. First we had breakfast at the B&B &B, which is included in your stay and this place is really cool because there's so much there. So they've got the B&B &B with the pool and a hot tub. Breakfast included, which I'll tell you more about in a second. They have a full spa with massages and all that stuff. They also have a cooking school on premises. And that's where on Saturday nights, they have this big dinner that's made by the people in the cooking school. And it's like high-end, lovely, wonderful food. We didn't do that because we already had plans to go somewhere else. But the breakfasts were amazing as well. Like fine dining kind of food. You sit down they bring you a fruit cup and it's different every day whatever's fresh and then you get some kind of fresh pastry so one day it was an apple cake one day it was a corn muffin I think it had little bits of jalapeno in it the first breakfast was a vegetable frittata you know, eggs and stuff with pieces of bacon on the side and then the second day was a huevos rancheros tortilla with pinto beans and then the eggs on top and salsa and then it had a breakfast sausage on the side. Fantastic. They also make a fresh juice every day. The first day was orange and pineapple and the second was orange and banana. And, and I forgot to mention this about the Driscoll, so I'll tell you about that too. Both hotels are like art museums. Here's a picture of the hallway in the Driscoll. The hallways are just lined with these paintings. There are people, there are animals, there are still lifes, there are landscapes, beautiful old paintings all in these big gold frames. They even have their fire extinguisher set up behind glass in a big gold frame. That's how fancy the Driscoll is. But the Blair House also has artwork up in the shared rooms on the property and in each of the rooms and cabins. 
and that artwork is by local artists and it's for sale. And they have some glass pieces, glass lamps and things. And those are also from a local artist who does glass blowing. And we went that morning after breakfast to his studio. So he has a gallery where you can see and buy his work. And then there's also his workshop where he does the work and there's seating where you can sit and watch demonstrations throughout the day. So we did that. We saw the first demonstration of the day and it was fantastic. This is the third time I've seen glass blowing done in person. One was in Murano, Italy, and the other was also in Texas up at the Renaissance Festival. This was by far the most interesting and entertaining and I learned the most. He's really got his act down. I mean, he's been doing the glass blowing for 40 years, so obviously he knows what he's doing there, but he's really got like the entertainment education part of it down too. It was really, really fun and interesting to watch. And he started out by making this thing that looks kind of like a sea urchin, right? But then at some point he pokes a hole in one end and starts to open up that end and you saw it just get bigger and bigger. And by the end of it, he'd made kind of a plate and it was actually going to be mounted on the wall with a bunch of other ones in different colors that were in the gallery. And unfortunately I did not get a picture of that. I wish I had, but that was wonderful. There were several pieces I wanted to get and I couldn't decide. And I was gonna go back the next day and get something, but then something else happened and we didn't make it back there. After the glass blowing, we were headed up to a winery, but we found a rum distillery on the way. So we stopped there. We tasted their three different rums and and then sat up on their sort of tree house deck thing, very pretty, to have a rum cocktail. And we saw dogs there, that's always a good thing. Then we went back to Driftwood Estates, that's the place with the view where we became wine club members, and we had lunch at their bistro, it was fantastic. I had a wonderful salad, it's a spring mix with candied pecans, gorgonzola cheese, dried cranberries, and a raspberry vinaigrette. Delicious. And then we had appointments at Fall Creek Vineyards, for wine tastings. We had never been to that winery before, and they're right across the street from a very famous barbecue place called the Salt Lick. So if you're in that area and you want barbecue and wine, this is the place to go. The Salt Lick is excellent. Fall Creek, their wines were okay. I, I wasn't really that crazy about them. We did buy a couple. After our tasting, we had some time to kill before our dinner reservation at another place. We got this bottle of sparkling wine. We drank about half of it there. Couldn't drink anymore. Corked it, put it in the car. Later that evening, when we finally got back to the bed and breakfast, we went to get this out. The cork was missing. Of course it was because it was a sparkling bottle and it got pushed out and there was nothing left in the bottle. It had spilled all over the back of Paul's car. So it smells pretty good in there right now. The wine that I have in here right now, I don't know if you can see it at all. It's about half full. It's a white wine that they gave us at the bed and breakfast when we arrived and we'd never drank any of it. So I just put it in this bottle and corked it up. And because it's not sparkling, it didn't explode. So we drank that there and then we bought two bottles to take home at Fall Creek, this Sangiovese and this Chez Rosé. Oh, and I forgot to mention two things. When we were at the Driftwood Bistro having lunch earlier, I went back into the building where we did the wine tasting because I remembered that they had a bottle on the menu that was exclusive to wine club members only and I just had to have it even though it was a little pricey. It's the Alicante Bouchard. Boucher. I think I'm saying that correctly. I have no idea what this is. I've never had that grape before. It's a French grape, so I'm looking forward to trying it. And I bought this little clutch, the only handbag I purchased on the trip, and it looks like that on the front and the back. I thought the colors were really pretty. I like the look of it. It's handmade in Oaxaca, Mexico. I love things from Oaxaca. They know how to do things there. They know how to make beautiful things there. There's a zipper on top, fabric interior, and just a little pocket right here. And besides wine, that's really the only thing I bought on the trip. And by the way, this was the bag I carried most of the time, the Longchamp Le Pliage in the large size in the bronze. Love it. And there's another bag I carried, but I can't tell you about it yet because I haven't revealed it to you and it's a big surprise. You will see it soon. I should have that video up on Saturday. After our tasting at Fall Creek, we had dinner reservations at a restaurant in this area that I have been told time and time is the best restaurant in the area. It's high end. The food is excellent. It's an Italian restaurant called Trattoria Licina. Um, we've heard about this restaurant for a couple years. We'd never been to it. So we thought this is the time. Let's go 
go do it. The grounds are beautiful, the restaurant is beautiful, it's surrounded by vineyards, it's all beautiful. The food was not good. The food was okay. The, the food was, if you're the kind of person who likes the kind of Italian food that they make at places like Olive Garden, you'd like this restaurant. I think that's a lot of Americans. If you're the kind of person who prefers the kind of Italian food that Italians make and eat in Italy, this is a very, very disappointing restaurant. There was not much about it that was authentic. It was very Americanized and it wasn't even done very well, in my opinion. The Bistecca Fiorentina, the Florentine steak, which in Italy is a giant, like two or three inch steak. It's huge, it's cooked rare. And I never had one in Italy. So I thought, well, why not try it here? It turned out to be about this big and this thick, and it was a ribeye and it was tough. They cooked it medium rare, which is what I prefer. So I was okay with that. It was cooked properly, but it was tough and it had no flavor at all. You would think, even if they have new employees like we talked about earlier, you would think that people in Texas who work at restaurants, especially what's supposed to be a nicer restaurant with nicer prices, you'd think they'd know how to cook a steak and make it taste good. It's really not that hard. I know how to do it. So I was very disappointed. I was only able to eat about a third of it before I just couldn't eat it anymore. Paul liked his food. He, he likes pretty much anything he eats. I'm the one that's more discerning. So yeah, that was very disappointing. The drinks were excellent though. I had an old-fashioned with some kind of walnut flavor in it. That was good. So that was our last full day. The next morning we woke up at the B&B. &B. Paul was sick that morning. That's why we didn't end up going back to the glass blowing shop. He just had an upset stomach. We'd been eating a lot of rich food that he's not used to and his body just couldn't take it anymore. So he even skipped breakfast at the B&B &B and I went and ate out there alone in the dining room. And then we drove home and we always do a Dairy Queen on road trips. So by that time he was feeling better so, so he got his Reese's peanut butter cup blizzard. I got my Heath bar blizzard. If you don't know what a blizzard is, those are like a soft serve vanilla ice cream and they put mix-ins in like different kinds of candy or cookies or whatever and I know my Heath, they add some chocolate syrup and they mix it all up and give it to you and it's delicious. And we made our way home. We stopped at a restaurant called Showbowls in a town about an hour or so from Houston called Columbus. And we got, Paul got a chocolate cream pie from the dogs for his for Father's Day. And then we stopped at my mom's house and picked up the dogs and Vincent. They'd been there the whole time, by the way. I forgot to tell you that at the beginning. And then on the way home, the thing you've all been waiting for, I got a text message. Let me read it to you. It's from a number I don't recognize. It says, congratulations. You've won $950,000 from the Lotter Online Lottery. We drew the winners randomly. Your phone number were selected randomly. Here are the steps to claim your prize. Send an email to, and they give the email and please include your winning lottery reference number and they give that. So I'm sure, I haven't emailed them back yet, been restraining myself, but I'm sure as soon as I email them, give them the reference number, they're gonna ask for my bank information so that they can deposit the $950,000 that I won, right? So I'll get that to them and then I'll go buy a Birkin, baby. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you back here next time. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.